All right, we are live. Welcome to the Restaurant Marketing Podcast, where we talk about how multi-unit brands successfully market at the local level. Today on the show, we welcome Alan Beck of Costa Vida Fresh Mexican Grill. They're a fresh, casual brand based in Layton, Utah, with over 100 locations. That's amazing. Alan's been with the company for over six years. Uh, he worked his way up from assistant manager to general manager and is now the director of off-premise. Uh, he's a self-proclaimed restaurant tech nerd. Cool, bro. Me too. Uh, Alan coordinates efforts with third-party delivery companies, catering, loyalty, their website, and their IT department. He's got lots of people uh, on the hook. Uh, fun fact, Alan only has four fingers on his right hand. Alan, welcome to the Restaurant Marketing Podcast. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. <clears throat> this is going to be exciting. Anytime I get to spend some time with Rev, it's a great day. So I'm stoked. God bless. Thank you. And we'll see each other in a couple of days. So we'll have more, more to talk about. Super excited about Restaurant Leadership Conference. Uh, if you are watching the show live and you have a question, just make a comment. We'll see that. We'll bring it up on screen. We're happy to answer your questions. But Alan, let's just kick right into it. So typically on the show, we I bring on marketing leaders. I bring on CMOs, VPs of marketing, directors of marketing. That's not you. Uh, you're, def, you're probably more in the operations team than the marketing team, correct? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, I, I wanted to I wanted to do that for a reason. I know that you guys have recently made some cool decisions around marketing that you helped make those decisions. And I know that a lot of the things that you oversee have a direct effect marketing or assist with marketing. And I thought it was an interesting angle. So just so everybody has a frame of reference today, uh, we're not exactly the marketing show today, but this is marketing adjacent. Hey, there we go. It's the other side a little bit. Amen. I, and I, I famously say this probably 10 times a week, but uh, marketing likes to write checks that operations has to cash. Right. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, a fan of, I'm a fan of what I call mark, the markerations agreement. You know what right. I mean? Right. So yeah. tell te te everybody a little bit about your role and how it works. Yeah. So I'm the director of off-premise and catering here at Costa. Uh, basically, long story short, oversee uh, our app, our website, uh, our third-party DSP contracts and programs. And then all of our catering uh, from both like third party, uh, like easy cater and, uh, and then all of our direct uh, catering as well. We, uh, me and my team, we account for about 32% of our brand wide business wow. uh, here at Costa Vida. That's amazing. Uh, out of curiosity, feel free to say I can't share that publicly if you want, but what's the percentage off premise of third to first? Like, are you heavier with like the DSPs or are you heavy with direct? Yeah, so we're about 4% heavier with uh, third-party DSPs right now than we are with direct, uh, which, I mean, to your point, you brought it up a little earlier, we've gone through essentially a tech stack rebuild, uh, and that's that's the purpose of that tech stack rebuild is we're trying to get more people to come back to first party rather than third party. What is, uh, we are going to go into marketing then. What is your <laughs> top, like, one or two suggestions in trying to get people to convert? So, I mean... For me, I, I think of like the experience, right? If, if I'm trying to get you to come over to my app from a third party app, I have to make that experience frictionless, easy to use, eye catching, et cetera. So <clears throat> if, if I'm trying to bring you over and you have a negative experience on my direct app or website or whatever it may be, you're going to revert immediately back to what you know and what you're comfortable with. So as we've gone through and we're building the new app and our new website and everything, that's been top of mind is, is this a friction-free experience? Is checkout easy? Is, you know, modifying your, your, your orders easy? Um, is it easy to add things on or take away things? Whatever it may be, it's got to be a friction-free experience from beginning to end. I love this answer. As a marketer, I was like, oh, well, you add a QR code, you need to do an offer. Like I go through all the marketing tactics and you're like, wait a minute. We have to make sure that if we do that to you, it's easy to use. That was a mm -hmm. great answer. Yeah. Uh, ha have you recently switched your your online or even uh, and your loyal? I'm sorry, your online and your app ordering partners, or you've been using the same one for a long time? So we've been we've been using the same online uh, and like app for 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 last six years, uh, and we've recently made a, a loyalty change. Uh, from you know our longtime partner of Punch, and we we switched to go to with Spengo, uh, Neil and Yvonne over there. Shout out to them; those guys have been great, very awesome. We love them uh, to spend time with and and get to know over the last eighteen to twenty four months. Uh, yeah, we moved slow on on some of this stuff, unfortunately. So I appreciate their patience, but yeah, we've switched over to uh, Spengo, 
Um, and we're, we're excited that uh, what, what, what they have to offer and, and what's going on there. So in it, I think changing loyalty is probably like the second biggest tech decision under changing POS. That's that's the one. Please don't make me do this type of <laughs> scenario. Right. Loyalty right. might be number two, at least from a marketer's perspective. When when you were thinking it's time to change loyalty providers, like what what drove that thought? Like what made that become a priority? Yeah. So I guess to kind of give a little bit of a backstory it would help paint this picture the best. Um, so in January of 2020, so just two months before the, the world fell apart, right? Um, we, we switched over to Olo. We had just signed with Olo and we were transitioning all of our, our locations over to Olo. Um, and when, when the pandemic hit, uh, we, because the switch that we made to Olo it allowed us to adapt and lift and shift and be very agile in our business. Whereas just probably four or five months prior to that, we would have been in like deep trouble. And so our biggest, one of our biggest decisions in switching loyalty providers was that same uh, same kind of aspect is we wanna be able to be with a loyalty provider that in this ever changing, especially in the digital world that's that's come up, you know, uh, and, and, the, and where the world has gone over the last few years, we want a, a partner that is agile and can lift and shift and has new technology and is innovating and doing all those things that allow us to capitalize on the business where it's at. And again, making sure that it's a friction-free experience. And, and we, we found that Spengo uh, was the best partner for that. All right. So just make sure I understand. You were like, look, we're changing, we're adapting. We need a company that can also adapt and change it at the level we're adapting at, or maybe even a little faster than us, that has like the right integrations, all that stuff. Additionally, it also has to have a really clean and easy to use customer experience. Yep. Amen. Exactly. God bless. You make it sound so easy and yet nobody does it. Um, <laughs> how, how do you test that? Do you like, you go to like 10 different restaurants and try to log in and order and like, how, like what's your process? Well, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think I have probably... 70 restaurant <laughs> brands apps on my phone uh, from all different providers. You know, some are custom, some are uh, a, a SaaS platform, uh, some are with legacy loyalty, some are with new loyalty. And so I want to just find that experience. And obviously in our space, we're lucky enough in our space, there's a juggernaut that's really paving the way for this. And we can kind of find out what they're doing and, and figure out how, while they're doing it. We don't have the deep pockets like they do. So we, we try to emulate them in some areas, not all areas, but it allows us to kind of piggyback off of their their thoughts, their ideas, and, and kind of the direction that they're moving and, and allows us to, to, to do what we do best as well. You're talking about the Amazon app, right? Being the juggernaut? Absolutely. Right? <laughs> I, joke, jokes aside, though, I do believe that customer expectations are created by Target, Walmart, Uber, Amazon, like these apps that people use every day. We kind of want that from all of our online ordering at Apple. Like, you know, jo jokes aside, like, I do think that's true. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, as frustrating as it is for us at times, right? Um, there's a reason why Amazon went to a two-click checkout, right? That's what people wanted. You know, a billion-dollar company isn't just making a decision to have a two-click checkout because that was a great idea. Let's run with it. Let's see what happens. No, there's a lot of research I'm sure that's been done uh, in that. Now, obviously, there's some sometimes the frustration if your kid's like on Alexa or whatever and two clicks away and they've ordered you know, <laughs> whatever it is, you're like, oh, crap, right? That's the frustrating aspect. But when I'm using Amazon and I'm checking out to get, to get my items, I love that it's two clicks. Problem solved. I'm out. Yeah, I'm I, I Speaking of Ivan from Spengo, I learned this from him. He gave a presentation at RLC. It might have been two years ago that I literally was like, damn it. Uh, he like, he's like, you want to see what the most frictionless experience is on the Internet? He's like, do you know that you can add a Tesla, a, a $100,000 plus car into your cart in two clicks? I was like, no way. No. And then we, we like brought it up live. Like, sure enough. You can be Tesla. I want this model in your cart. Like, yeah. that's it. Like, like, 
yeah, how do we get to that? Like, how do I go, um, you know, El Pastor, black beans, soda, like, let's go. Right. Amen. And that's what we're trying to emulate here uh, with our new app and website and, and, and getting that built out and, and partnering with Spengo and Olo and, and whatnot and making sure that experience is, you know, if you, if you just want our pork burrito, pork burrito, check out, done. No complication. Don't, you know what I mean? Just make it as friction free. You got to meet the guest on where they're at. So how are you, let, let's talk about loyalty. How, how are you driving loyalty adoption? Man, that's a great question. Uh, how are we driving loyalty? Adoption? Right. <laughs> right? Um, I would say the biggest, the, the biggest way we're, we're driving loyalty adoption is, um, and, and part of our switch over to SpendGo, we're, we're really looking at, at our loyalty program as a whole. And, and what are, what are our guests looking for? For a number of years, we've been really good at just having like essentially a digital punch card. Uh, and, and again, you know, we've talked about Amazon, we've talked about Chipotle, we've talked about others that are industry leaders. Uh, you know, when I come, when I think of loyalty, I think of, and I know you've had a bad experience with the, this airline in the past, but I love them. I fly them everywhere I go is Delta and, and their loyalty program and I, and what they can do, uh, there's a reason why I go there. I have a great experience. And so if we can emulate that in the restaurant industry, if, uh, if I can and get a notification saying, Hey, Rev is a loyal, uh, customer, he just walked in the door. I get that notification as a general manager. I see you. Hey, welcome back, Rev. It's glad to have you. Glad to have you back. Get you that same orders you got last time: pork burrito, black beans, mild sauce, smothered. It's on the way. Now you've had a better experience, and and that's how we can drive more customer loyalty and more adoption that way. So, I'm gonna make sure I heard correctly. Uh, you're making sure that the experience of loyalty is really good, so that people use it more often. But are you also like promoting inside the four walls? Like how are you getting new people into loyalty? Yeah, so we promote inside the four walls. We run, um, you know, when they when they just download the app, they get uh, they get rewards that way. And then when they invite friends, uh, family, whoever it may be, and they sign up using their code, they get rewards as well, both them and the, the individual that they had sign up uh, and making sure that, um, I mean, the biggest thing is, is if you have a loyalty program and it's a pain in the butt to, to redeem, right? You got to make that again, just like checkout. You got to make sure that experience is even is is clear. So, you know, biggest thing that we we've done is, you want to redeem, it pops up a QR code. They scan that right at the register, and it's done. There's, it's two boom boom and problem solved. Are you using? Um... Are you using kiosks in store or is everything through a register still? Everything through a register still uh, because the, the kiosk, we've, we've experimented with kiosks and, and we've talked a little bit about it. For us, um, there's, there's a lot of menu in, ingredients there. And so for our back end inventory purposes, we got to make sure that everything's running in the right way. And so uh, we haven't got into the kiosk game yet. We've looked into it. We've played with it a little bit, but not quite there yet for us. Nice. Um, when you, somebody signs up, I assume they get a reward right off the bat. Are you giving them like a, 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 a sign on bonus? Mm -hmm. What does your sign on bonus look like? $4 off. So they could use that on their first purchase or their second purchase? First purchase. So if they sign up, if they download the app while they're in our, our queue line, they can use it that day. Okay. And when approximately how many trips to like the second second reward? So um, it's a it's for every dollar spent is uh, a point essentially. So at fifty points, you get another four dollar reward. So for every fifty dollars you spend, you get four dollars off. I have a family of, uh, of five, so it seems like I get four dollars rewards every time I go. So <laughs> we, we uh my my local pizza place has a rewards program that's not so different. Um, definitely not as sophisticated. But we had them cater my kid's birthday last Sunday. And I called him. And I was like, do you want me to just call you on the phone, give me my credit card? And he's like, yes, but I'll make sure you get the rewards. So it was like $400 of catering. I, yesterday I just got like yes. 10, 10, 10, 10. It's like, great. <laughs> Next time we order pizza, it's totally free. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's great. Uh, 
God bless. Yeah, I was at a RFIS two weeks ago and they had like a CMO panel just talking about loyalty. And I literally asked the question. I said, um, is it better to give a reward before purchase or to get a second purchase? Universal. They all said the same thing. Second purchase. I was like, oh, that's interesting because I've been told give a reward for sign up. And they're like, no, no, no. You give a small reward for sign up and then make the first reward big and right away. Hmm. So if they've made like two purchases, then they would get a BOGO or whatever, you know, 10, 10, ten dollars off, something like that. I haven't tested it, but I don't know if you guys have tested anything like that. Uh, we, we've done things like that. We, we send out, we have a lot of uh, redemptions through the app. And so if you have the app, you're already, you're already getting, um, like we send out two to three offers a month. So it's like for either a free appetizer, a BOGO, whatever it may be. So just by having the app, you're already getting a lot of those offers automatically. So I can see where they're coming with it. I don't disagree with it. I think we're just going at it just a slightly different route. And just by having the app, you're going to get rewards because we're going to send you stuff to get you into the store. Do you run any um, any playbooks like, you know, double point this or triple point that or, you know, three purchases in a month or do this, that? Like what, what kind of playbooks do you have for that? Yeah. So, um, you know, for like, for instance, we have uh, double points coming up for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, which we're which we're stoked on. I mean, for us, it's our busiest day of the year, and so just by saying, you know, by getting our 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 customers in there, if you have the app, just by coming in and probably eating at eating at our store like you were already planning on doing, we're gonna give you double points, so then we can get you to come back, you know, later that week or the week after, and and, and get more food in your mouth. So they hold on, they get double points on Cinco de Mayo, then there's like a bounce back double points offer. No, I just they get double points on Cinco de Mayo. And the idea is you get double points on Cinco de Mayo. You're going to redeem those within the next two weeks when you come back. How do you, how do you get a 14-day redemption? Well. Like what, what kind of marketing has to be done or actions has to be done to get somebody to take that action? So a, a big part of it is uh, just the push notifications that, that we send out. We have a loyalty manager that's her full-time job and making sure that uh, for the brand that these are being sent out, reminders are being sent out. Um, there's automated um, things like it, when it's your uh, messages that are sent out. Uh, when it's your birthday, you get a free dessert and um, you have to redeem that in the month of, of your birthday. You don't have to do it on your birthday within a couple of days. And so with, with about four days left in the month, you'll get an auto reminder. Hey, you have a free dessert in your, in your rewards. Uh, you have four days or five days to redeem that. Uh, We'd love to see you come on in. And these are all set up as like automated. It happens yep. in yep. cool. You you're doing that through Spengo? Yes. So we uh we just we just we haven't officially launched with Spengo yet. We've signed, we've we've got the, the kickoff and all that. Uh but uh yeah, right now that's all being done through punch, but we're gonna emulate that into the Spengo. God bless. We turned off birthday rewards at my hamburger shop today. Really? You no longer get a you no longer get a reward on your birthday. We use Spengo as well. Uh, we turned off birthdays today. Today we launched half birthdays. Ooh! So now instead of and we're doing this whole April Fool's promotion. So most people do an April Fool's joke on April Fool's Day. We're doing April Fool's all month. And so the fool this month is <laughs> we're turning off birthdays and we're starting half birthdays. And it's legit. So from now on, six months out from your birthday, you'll get your birthday reward at, at Handcraft Burgers and Burgers. That's awesome. I love it. But same thing. You have 30 days to use it, et cetera. So That's cool. We're, yeah, cool. we're a little weird. We're a little weird. Um, <coughs> all right. Let's, let, let's, we, we've gone pretty deep on loyalty. And honestly, I could probably ask 600 more questions about loyalty. Right. But um, <laughs> how many of your purchase first-time guests does their purchase start in, a, in the app? Like, Hey, I'm going to go try Costa Vida. I'll make it through the app. So, yeah. So that's a oof, this is a this is a hot topic right now. So what we're seeing is uh, the way that we're tracking it is through our surveys. Um, we, we're using uh, Medallia for our surveys, uh, and 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 seventy percent of guests first time are using the app. Really? Wow. I would typically, as a hospitality marketing consultant, not tell people to push that move. What's working? Like, why is that doing so well for you? You know, <clears throat> I want to say we're, we're, we're piggybacking off of 
what we the, the what we found like when we were able to lift and shift so easily during the pandemic when we were able to meet the customers at the digital level it really helped us and i think we're still kind of going off of the coattails of that and and and, uh, uh, and people are still utilizing it because of that because of the the just the ease that it was at the time um and now we know we got the level set again it, it worked for the time now new technologies come out, new experiences, new researches come out. We got a level set again, so that we can continue to capitalize on uh, on those customers. Get them do to you come feel, back your time. Sure. Do you feel like people walk into the store and they get hit with a poster that says "Download the app, get four deals off," and like that's where it's happening, or is it more of like you're running ads on Facebook that bring them to an app download? Like what's or all of these things? Like what's the play? Yeah, so there's there's some small uh, POP in the in the store that uh, have, has you download it. Um, obviously, the cashiers are talking about it at the checkout, uh, but a lot of Facebook uh, and and meeting the guests in the digital world, in Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc., uh, and getting them to be able to to do it that way. So essentially, you're promoting it everywhere. Yeah. God bless. And do you have a sense of like where the biggest waterfall of, of the app downloads is coming from in store, online, social. Um, I would say in store is, is where it's at. Um, especially when on Friday night, when people are in the long queue line, because that's our busiest day of the week. And they're like, you know what, maybe if I just download the app, I can just order ahead next time and skip the line and, and just pick it up to go and, 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 and go that route. And we've seen a lot of it from there. So I am, 100% that person. Like if I walk into a Dunkin' Donuts and there's two people in line, I whip out my phone and see if I can order faster. Than this <laughs> like that is a hundred percent me. And then I curse, curse myself saying, why didn't I order on the way over? Like hundred percent that person. Yep. E- even at places that like are ca- like places where you have full service table service. If I know I can order to the table before I sit down, hundred percent. I will. I have a seven year old. Like, Right. Let's go. <laughs> I got. I got. I got. I have a ten, a, a ten year old, a six year old, and a five year old. So I feel you on hundred percent. So, yes, we're the family that like the wife and I are trying to have like a nice time and keep him like entertained. And so we'll order like drinks and apps for us, and then order his whole meal. Right so now. like by the time the apps come, here's his meal. It's gonna take him twice as long to eat a hot dog because he's on the foot. <laughs> but right. yes, the faster he gets to the table, the better. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's so true. I, 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 I feel that for sure. God bless. How does your role align to the marketing department? Like how does that bi-directional, you know, exchange of, of thoughts, feelings and, and work happen? So it's, it's, so Jeremy, our senior director of marketing and I have a very close relationship. Uh, also work with Mitch, who's our director of marketing and he's over social media. Uh, as well as the loyalty program, and so for me, we have a, it's it's we have to, our our jobs. Uh, I mean, I'm probably over in Mitch's or Jeremy's office five to six times a day because with me overseeing the relationship with Olo, and and them overseeing marketing, if they run a promotion and we can't redeem that online or through the app or whatever it may be, with Olo, that's going to create friction. So we work very closely together. They're they're very awesome. In, uh, in making sure that if something's being discussed, hey, let's grab Alan and his team and bring him into this conversation to make sure that what we're talking about is actually doable. And then same thing, hey, we're talking about this with Olo or we're trying to make this change. Let's bring marketing and IT in and make sure that uh, they're aware of it as well. And so it's really like this like three-headed beast uh, in working together and making sure that um, we have each other's best interest. My success um, is very much determined by marketing's success. The same thing, their success is determined by the ability for me and my team to make sure that everything flows through with no friction. So we, we want to make sure we continue that success and working close together um, and making sure that uh, we're all on the same page before we launch something. We've tested it. We've worked together, et cetera. Sorry, my light turned off. For the <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, ultimately it's just making sure like we've built that a relationship over the last several years and and we're seeing the fruits of the labor from that all right so let's walk through like a marketing scenario um somebody somewhere decides we need more revenue hey stores need to be up one percent this month does that 
does that planning happen start in the marketing department? Is that, you know, assuming it's all online ordering, does that start with your department? Like what's that function look like? So there's a few things. Uh, I guess I'm going to ask a clarifying question. Are we talking about on a single store level? We're we talking about at the brand level. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but at a brand level, it's it's very much focused on um, you know holidays and uh, and and there. So on that, it's making sure that hey, marketing starts that idea and, and says okay, Cinco de Mayo, we want to offer X. Um, Al. And, and team, can we do that on, on Olo? Is there any issues there on the app website? No, we were able to do that. This is how we can do it. We'll get it built in, no harm, no foul. Uh, we're, we're good to go there. Then on the store level, um, it starts with us. And, and there's a few things that, that we look at first. Before we want to drive more revenue there, we're going to look at very specific KPIs, which is uh, in my area, we, we're, we're talking about uh, air rates, uh, dash your wait time. What is your Google rating at or your Yex rating at? Um, um, what is, um, oh man, there's two more. I just blinked on them. Sorry about that. But there's five KPIs that we look at. If operations is hitting in all five KPI categories, then we say, yes, now we can look at, now we can bring in marketing and say, hey, marketing, they're executing in all five K KPI areas. So we're good to drive more, uh, digital business to them. So let's go ahead and and, and develop a, a local store marketing plan to, to assist them, whether that is uh, boosting catering, uh, you know, running different offers through the app and website, um, door knockers, whatever it may be, bag stuffers. And then I turn it over to them. But the very first, before we do more business to them, mar market more business to them, we want to make sure that they're hitting in the five operational categories. That we can uh, execute. That, so. that is top three answers to that question we've <laughs> ever had on the show. Because <laughs> again, normally I'm talking to marketing people and they're like, spend more money, <laughs> like, send more loyalty. And you're like, no, no, no. We have to make sure that the house is buttoned up. Like there can't be any leaky buckets. Like, you know, so a, you know, you can't market a turd. Like if right? something's wrong, something's wrong. You know what yeah. I mean? If and, they're running a six percent error rate, we don't want to give them a hundred more customers and mess up on on six other customers because all we've done is we've spent money and they're never going to come back because we've had a bad experience. So yeah, that, that is a, that is a, everybody should write that down. Uh, and if you think of all five KPIs, I'd love to get those from me later because I'm going to start using that. <laughs> right. I'll pull it up while I'm waiting. So while we're, while we're talking, I'll get it pulled up here. I'm so, I'm sorry. I blame no, but I, no, but I think that's pretty typical. Like, and that's the reason why I do think marketing and operations really need to work hand in hand because you know, ultimately, you know, we used to live in a world where it was like, oh, have great food and open the doors and you'll be successful. Like, OK, we don't live in that world anymore. But if you open the doors and the food sucks, it doesn't matter what marketing does. Right. Yeah. If, if or if, or, you know, in marketing speak, if you open the doors and nobody finds it, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. So, yeah. yeah, you have to make sure that like even if, you know, you could have the most amazing promotion in the world, the most beautiful looking food, the coolest redemption, the highest, you know, offer, whatever. If the experience, a crappy experience, doesn't really matter, you know? Amen. I got them right here. So first one's order accuracy. Most important. Are you executing at a high rate? Uh, next one is wait time, which is referring to um, how long is your customers or third-party delivery providers waiting after initial quote time? So if we quoted them 15 minutes and they're, we're averaging four minutes past quote time, that means we're, we're 19 minutes and we need to work on that. Third one is cancellations, which is referring to, do you have your full menu online? Um, are you running out of things um, and whatnot? If you're running out of things, let's get those pars set first before we push more poor people to you. The fourth one is downtime, which is you know referring to throttling with Olo. Are you at capacity already? Because if you're already at capacity, we want to spend marketing dollars to push more people because they're going to be waiting even longer to order. If they want to order, have their mail at seven o'clock, but you're at capacity and they can't get that order until 745, they're going to go somewhere else. It's a bad experience. And the last one, as I men mentioned, was their, their ratings. Um, if you have a 3.7, we got to get the house cleaned up first before we push more people to you. So, 
Awesome. That was incredible. That was worth all the money right there. Uh, Alan, it's a 30 minute show. We're at 30 minutes. Alan back from Costa Vida. This is incredible. If, if somebody's going to Costa Vida for the first time, what should they order? Ooh, right now we're having LTO. Try our chili lime chicken. Oh, so good. Rev, I'll bring it to you next week in Phoenix. It's I will cool. hold you to that. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. And if uh, if you like the show, please share it with a friend. Give us a rating on iTunes. You know, like this post, share it with it. And uh, everybody, thank you for listening to Alan. Thanks so much, buddy. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.